Welcome back to the channel and no, the title is not clickbait. I am a proponent of open carry and maybe it's because I'm, uh, you know, getting older, just hit 40 and I'm getting a little bit more fuddy in my old age, but I do think we should make open carry great again. Now, let me give you a little bit of background on how long I've been carrying a handgun. Um, I actually had my CCW when I lived in California uh, for, for a few years, so it is something that I had there. I went through the entire background check process. It is very difficult to get your concealed carry permit in California. It's sort of eased up with, uh, with the Bruin decision, but not really. Um, so it was pretty intrusive. The sheriff actually comes to your house to make sure you live at the house that you have on your application. You have an interview. There's an entire process that you go through there. And you have to carry specific guns. So California is not a very gun-friendly state. When I moved to Texas uh, over five years ago, I was like, this is going to be amazing. Uh, you know, Texas obviously is very, very gun-friendly in theory. Um, but I found that it really isn't as um, much normalized to be carrying a gun in Texas as you would expect. So I got, when I moved here, you still had to get your uh, LTC uh, in order, your license to carry in order to carry a concealed firearm and or carry it openly. Recently, Texas has passed constitutional carry, which means you can carry a gun concealed uh, without a license. However, open carry is still very restricted. So um, it's not something that you see very often. Now, I don't open carry all the time because here in Texas, there are a lot of property rights laws, meaning uh, local businesses can actually restrict who can carry guns on their property because they are the property owner. So there are signs that you see when you walk into uh, certain establishments. Now, what do I do? I ignore those. Okay, completely ignore them. I go wherever I want when I'm concealed carrying um, because most of the time, mass shootings happen in places where people aren't allowed to carry firearms. So, you know, concealed carry makes it very easy to ignore those. Um, as far as open carrying is concerned, I've done it, you know, off and on over the years that I've been here. Typically when I am uh, going to a nice event, a barbecue, I actually want to have a barbecue gun, so I would always carry in leather, had a Bianchi holster uh, that I would carry typically in 1911 open. Sometimes I'd use a nice Kydex holster, but that really isn't the barbecue gun style. Um, recently, I got a new rig here. This is a Sam Andrews Speed Scabbard, uh, courtesy of uh, Eli Duckworth. We work together, and I have a Cabot Vintage Classic 5-inch 45 ACP in the holster right now. The Speed Scabbard's kind of a cool... Sorry, this is not a commercial for the, uh, the, the, the leather that I've got on, but... I got this, this holster and this whole rig and it made me want to carry more and it got me thinking about open carrying more. So let me talk about this real quick. Uh, the Speed Scabbard by Sam Andrews. This is a cool 80s retro design that he makes on occasion. And what makes it kind of cool is it's a high rise holster. It has a little bit of a cant forward and it has a little cutout back here behind the uh, trigger guard to allow you to get a really good purchase when you draw that gun where a lot of other holsters will have um, a little bit more of a sweat guard coming around there so you don't get the best purchase when you're drawing the gun out of the holster. Uh, the belt is triple K. I actually got it at NRA because my old belt broke when I was going in there. And Eli and I were the only people that were working booths in it at NRA in Dallas this year, open carrying. Um, we saw very few people open carrying. I've seen it in the past. Uh, like at Indianapolis, there's a lot of people open carrying. So there's very few this year. And it, it's more of what got the, the thought process going. Uh, on this side, I have a dual mag pouch also by Sam Andrews. So after going to NRA and seeing so few people in Dallas, Texas, and I know Dallas is kind of a yuppie area, um, open carrying, and the ones that I did see are what you would typically think of seeing, you know, Springfield XDs and, you know, either Uncle Mike's style holsters or, you know, drop leg holsters all the way down to your knees. Um, why isn't this more popular? So I started doing some research into it. And it's real interesting. So historically, people thought of concealed carrying as being the realm of criminals. So in the mid 1800s, if you concealed carry, that's what a criminal did. Law abiding citizens would actually show their weapon on their belt and not concealed carry. In fact, I got some stats here. The constitutions of Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi and Idaho 
permitted their respective legislatures to re regulate or prohibit concealed carry while respecting the right to open carry without a permit. So these states saw concealed carry as being primarily the act of, you know, hooligans of, you know, criminals, people breaking the law. So they restricted concealed carry, but not open carry. So what happened from the, you know, early 20th century, late 19th century until now to kind of flip that around in our heads, you know, even in the gun industry, um, I've, I heard it say, oh, I wouldn't open carry that stupid. And there's a lot of reasons that people give, but I really think that we should start taking a look at open carry and if you're able to in your state, and I'm looking at you, Florida, very interesting. People think that Florida is like super free Florida man. Florida still prohibits open carrying unless you're hunting, fishing, or actively going to and from your home or place of work, or actively going to and from fishing and or hunting. Outside of that, you can't open carry in Florida. Very interesting stuff. Now, since the late 90s, and really since the Heller decision and the Bruin Supreme Court case, um, we are seeing more and more states relax their concealed carry laws. And now I believe we have 29 states that even have constitutional carry, meaning permitless uh, concealed carry is allowed. But we haven't really seen much movement at all on the open carry front. It's all on the concealed carry. And I think that needs to change. Now, the reason that I think this is important is people have a stigma or demonization of firearms, especially people moving here to Dallas from, uh, you know, California. I'm one of them. I wasn't one of the bad Californians or New York. So having more firearms being seen in public uh, while not having crimes be committed will, I don't want to say desensitize people, but make them realize that it is a normal part of life and actually is a tool to be used just like a watch, just like a cell phone, uh, you know, just like your car and it needs to be used properly. So it'll take that stigma off of open carrying. And even here in Texas, when I open carry every single time I get multiple, you know, double takes and almost every single time someone makes a comment about it. Now, sometimes they're saying, hey, nice rig, because it is a, a nice rig and nice gun. Um, but, you know, you walk into a gas station to use the bathroom and some dude, you know, goes, oh, he's got that thing on him. You know, there's always some kind of comment. So I think the more people do this, the more that those comments and that surprise will go down. Now, let's cover the reasons that people use and I'm going to be honest, um, I've used these myself as to why open carrying is not a good idea and why I think those may or may not be true. Uh, the first one is you become a target. And I used to think about this, um, that, you know, if I'm in a bank or if I'm in a gas station and a robber is going to come in and some ba a bad guy and he's going to commit a crime, the first thing that he's going to do is say, oh, that guy's got a gun. I'm going to shoot him. Now, I think a lot of people fantasize way beyond the realities of what will actually occur. Um, I have not been able to find a single case where there was somebody open carrying a gun and a criminal comes in to commit a crime, sees that person with the gun and just goes ahead and blasts them. Um, it's not a thing that I've seen. Now, and I've searched pretty prolifically on the internet for it. If you can find one, put it in the comments below, but I couldn't find it. Now, I do understand the argument that if you aren't concealed carrying, you can, you know, stay, or if you aren't open carrying, you can get around and maybe, you know, stay out of sight until you have the opportunity to draw and do what you need to do in that situation. But I, I think the carrying of a gun and the open carrying of a gun is probably going to be a more of a deterrence than it's going to be uh, a factor to make you a target. Why do they have security guards at places? I've seen them all in Houston, a lot in Houston. Houston sucks. Um, they go down to Houston, there's security guards all over the place. They're loaded up with terrible guns. Um, but they aren't the first target when somebody goes in. They're just there as a deterrent from people doing bad things. So I think the target argument isn't correct. I think it would actually act as more of a deterrent and could lower overall crime. Number two, someone can grab your gun in a fight. Now, here's the deal. Two things that I, I used to think about this and two things that, that I actually came up with is number one, don't get into a fight. Um, there's a lot of situations that can be de-escalated without physical violence. Um, so, you know, if you can avoid a fight, definitely avoid it. Um, I have friends that uh, just can't seem to avoid fights, but that seems to be a personality uh, defect that they have. So avoid the fight, number one. Number two is don't have that much of a distance, that close of a distance between you and a threat that 
you could be overwhelmed or have them take your gun. So while I can definitely see that your gun could be taken, the normal way that I carry is appendix. Um, it would be just as easy-ish for that gun to fall out and or be taken if I'm rolling on the ground. If I'm rolling on the ground, I need a level three retention rig, or if somebody's actually gonna be trying to take my gun, I want a level three rig uh, that's gonna have a, ho a hood and a lock. So I don't know if open carrying really is going to make people want to take your gun. Now, the third reason is it's not cool. Now, it's not that, you know, the aim of carrying a gun is being cool, but I think people relate people that open carry with other people that open carry, and the average person that open carries um, carries interesting things. They're a Springfield XD owner uh, carrying in a super duper drop leg holster down to their knee, wanting to be, you know, a tactical Timmy or something like that. Um, and that's normally what you see. Now, if you own a Springfield XD, I feel your pain. My first gun that I bought myself was a Springfield XD subcompact in 40 Smith & Wesson. So I made ter terrible choices in my life. I am more than uh, welcome now to make fun of yours. So what I would say to that is the more people who are carrying uh, guns, you know, decent guns, good guns, um, or whatever is the best and most reliable gun you can afford in good equipment, the more people that are doing that, the less that stigma inside of the gun industry, inside of the gun community can be. So get a good gun, get a good rig. You don't have to have a cabin on a, you know, same Andrews holster, but have a good gun that is reliable and a good rig with proper retention and good trigger guard coverage. And I think that kind of negates all of that. And the last one on the list is the fact that it is illegal in some places to open carry. If it's illegal in some places to open carry, um, you know, you can do it, but uh, you're definitely going to have a lot of trouble. Florida, I'm looking at you, still very, very disappointed that uh, open carry isn't legal there. Now on the flip side, what are the reasons to open carry? Well, I have a few. Number one, it's more comfortable than appendix. Now, I know a lot of people will carry at three o'clock, small of the back, which I don't you know, understand that specific carry area or like at a four o'clock inside the waistband. For me, when I carry concealed, the, the place that I can seal carry the best is appendix. Now, carrying on the outside of the waistband, three o'clock open carry, is definitely more comfortable for me. So, you know, comfort definitely plays a factor there. Next, one-handed draws are easier. So if you are, for some reason, holding something in your hand, drop it. But, you know, there's, there's times when you have young kids in your hand or something along those lines that you just don't want to drop. Um, making a draw stroke, for me, from appendix, one-handed with my right hand, is a little bit awkward and uncomfortable. Whereas, one-handed draws on a three o'clock outside the waistband, you know, open carrying, I can draw exactly as fast this way and get my first shot off as I can two-handed from appendix. Now, I don't set any speed records. Like I'm typically in like the one, two, one, two, five range from threat to draw and first shot, getting my shot in that A zone at uh, seven to 10 yards. So that is my, you know, the, the baseline that I run off of, but one-handed, I am definitely more able to do it outside the waistband. And speed-wise, I'm just as fast, if not faster, you know, carrying outside the waistband. Excellent. Now, the third reason is it forces me to dress up a little bit better. If I'm going to be carrying a gun that people can see, I don't want to look like a slouch. And, you know, as, as we all can, sometimes I get a little bit lazy in how I want to dress. And I think your appearance definitely determines how people respond to you. So what I'm saying is when I'm open carrying, I'm typically having my shirt tucked in. I'm wearing a buttoned up shirt, nicer pants, nicer shoes, typically in my boots, um, things like that. And dressing up a notch just makes me feel um, a little more comfortable and people will treat you differently when you dress up nicer. Now, how people treat you when you have a gun, that's, you know, their problem. Um, but I found that wearing a, wearing a gun and open carrying caused me to dress up more. You just feel better when you dress up nice. You know, it's like going on an airplane now. I don't put a suit on when I go on an airplane, 
But I'll tell you what, the people that get in fights on airplanes are always wearing sweatpants and Crocs. I don't know what it is. So I decided not going to wear sweatpants on an airplane for a very long time just to take that travel experience up a notch. So dress to impress when you're carrying a gun, you typically dress nicer. And the main reason that I think more people should be open carrying is that deterrence and um, normalization factor. If if everybody's carrying a gun and you know everybody's carrying a gun, the propensity of people to do stupid things um, can't help but go down. And while concealed carry is good, I don't know what the deterrence factor really exists if you don't know if somebody's carrying or not and able to defend themselves. So the deterrence factor and really big one, just showing people that firearms aren't that scary, just having it on your hip, it's not gonna just go off, well, you know, there are some brands out there that maybe that does happen. But um, for the most part, they're not going to go off. They're perfectly safe and they're around more than you know, I think will make it more acceptable in uh, everyday life to see firearms around. Now, this video shouldn't be very controversial, but it is the Internet. So who knows? Um, it is definitely up for debate. And speaking of debate in the comment section, do you open carry or do you conceal carry? And if you open carry, what is your favorite holster? The same Andrew Speed Scabbard is mine right here. Um, but with that, stay safe and thanks for watching.